Hi all, it's Dr. Hardy and today I'm talking about signs of prediabetes and one of the signs of prediabetes is something called acanthosis nigricans. This is just a fancy medical term for saying insulin resistance or prediabetes. So I'm just going to show a bunch of pictures of uh, the way that acanthosis nigricans can present itself as I also talk about a little bit about it, the, the disease itself. So what you're seeing here is um, the back of a neck um, of a darker skinned child, um, but it is seen in all races. And you see it looks crusted, almost burnt in this picture. Um, it's not smooth. Some people will describe it as velvety feel to it. Um, but this child's acanthosis nigricans is pretty significant, and it's very possible that they already have diabetes. So here's one that's not as significant, but you see that velvety appearance. It looks thickened. Um, another word for that thickened look is something called lichen lichenification or lichenified. Um, and even though it's not as dark as the other one, it is still a cause for concern. Um, acanthosis nigricans is usually found in the creases of the body, like the armpits, the groin, um, belly button folds, um, sometimes even the forehead, the chest. Um, once in a while, it is what we call an autosomal dominant trait where it's familial and it has nothing to do with insulin resistance, um, but that is um, rare. But typically for things that are autosomal dominant, one parent has it, at least one parent has it. So if the newborn baby comes out with these darkened areas, you can ask, oh, does mom have this or dad have this? And if one of them says, oh, yeah, I had that since I was a child, you know, that's probably more of a familial acanthosis nigricans. But most kids who are dealing with weight issues do not have the familial kind. They have the kind that is caused by endocrine, which is means your hormones, a hormone dysfunction, um, which is insulin resistance, and it's seen in prediabetes and diabetes. Let's go to another picture. This is a very severe looking acanthosis nigricans. Um, parents come in frantic. Um, you know, they realize they can't wash it off. I often hear parents say, oh, the back of their neck always looks dirty and I try to wash it. And when it gets to this point, uh, they're pretty much freaking out. Uh, but you can see it's darker, thickened skin, looks flaky almost. Um, it usually occurs um, in people under 40, but here we're talking about pediatrics and it's very, very common. Um, it's probably one of the most common symptoms I've seen in my clinic. So besides it being associated with obesity, um, you can also see this in hypothyroidism, um, polycystic ovarian disease, um, Cushing's disease, something that's rare in kids and only happens in adults is something called acromegaly. Um, but for the focus of this discussion, usually we're seeing a child who's pre-diabetic or who may have hypothyroidism, a low thyroid hormone. So here's another picture. This is nice and clear. You see the hyperpigmentation of what we call the posterior aspect of the neck or the back of the neck. And you see little skin tags growing off as well, like little warts. And that's pretty common in the skin folds as well. Here is one on the ankle. It's not as commonly seen on the ankle, but you can have it um, pretty much anywhere. Again, it's not as thickened looking, looking but 
it's hyperpigmented, and if they are having an elevated BMI, um, your first thought is still going to be insulin resistance. Here it is again on the posterior aspect of the knees or the back of the knees. Um, besides the stretch marks in between there, you see that darkened skin in another skin fold. Here's a close up of the skin tag that you can see in association with this issue. And this is my last slide that has it basically in the skin folds, on the anterior chest, which means front of the chest, anterior means front, posterior means back. Um, but as you can see, this child is skinny. So most likely he has an autosomal dominant trait, meaning it runs in the family, it has nothing to do with a hormone imbalance, but um, it's there and it usually presents at birth or it develops during childhood. So that's how you will be able to distinguish between the two. So a question I usually get is, does it go away? And the answer is usually it does as uh, the child starts to lose weight, it starts to get lighter and lighter. And even the adults, um, as they start to lose weight and their BMI is going down or whatever you're tracking, if it's the weight versus the BMI, um, but as symptoms improve, as you get healthier, it usually gets lighter and lighter and many times disappears. And when I see this and I talk to parents about this, I say, okay, it's time. This is pre-diabetes, and if we don't get control of this, your child will get diabetes. And this is what usually jumpstarts this healthy lifestyle path for them. Parents are not realizing what's happening until they see clear evidence with their eyes that there are changes, metabolic changes going on with their child, and this is very upsetting. So I hope you enjoyed this short um, informational video and I'm going to continue to upload about symptoms of prediabetes. So this is one of many. Have a good day.